Okay, in our video series on emergency medicine and infectious medicine, in this video, we are going to talk about dog bite and rabies. We are going to discuss the emergency management of a patient with dog bite. We are going to discuss the rabies prophylaxis indication. How do you give rabies vaccine and immunoglobulins? Whenever a patient presents to you in emergency department with dog bite, the first and the foremost thing is the patient's wound must be cleaned. Irrigate it with water, irrigate it with normal saline, apply piodine or iodine solution so you clean the wound properly. After that, dog wound should be left open. Dog wound is usually left open. It is not closed so that anaerobic bacteria cannot grow in it. And it must specially be left open if the patient's wound is on hand, if the patient has delayed presentation because there is more chances of infection growing in it, if the patient has puncture wound, these wounds must never be closed. So, preferably, dog wound should be left open. Clinical features of a patient with dog bite include erythema and swelling at the site of bite. There may be a puncture wound or if the bite is less, there might be a superficial abrasion. In adults, usually extremities are affected. And in children less than 5 years of age, head and neck is the most commonly affected region. You clean the wound with water, you leave the wound open and then you need to give antibiotic prophylaxis so the patient does not get any infection. The so first line drug for prophylaxis is amoxicillin with clavulanic acid. After that, if the patient did not get his tetanus shot in the last five years, you have to give the tetanus prophylaxis as well. After that, you have to decide that whether you have to give rabies vaccine or not, whether you have to give post-exposure rabies prophylaxis or not. I'll briefly talk about rabies virus first. Rabies virus is from the family of rhabdoviruses and the incubation period is from 4 to 12 weeks and it can be up to a year. And if someone gets infected with rabies, it can present in two forms. It is a very dangerous disease that is transferred by animals, the wild animals, and it can have encephalitic phase and a paralytic phase. In the encephalitic phase, patient will be having hydrophobia, fear of water. They won't be able to drink. They will be severely agitated. There will be anxiety, confusion, and increased muscle tone, excessive muscle spasm. After you give them water to drink, they will have excessive muscle spasms and gag reflex there will be hyper salivation they will be foaming out through their mouth so that is the encephalitic phase of rabies after that few patients can also develop a paralytic phase in paralytic phase patient develop flaccid paralysis paraplegia and ultimately respiratory failure and death remember rabies is 100 percent fatal Symptomatic rabies is almost always fatal. So if a person gets a dog bite or any wild animal bite, you must consider rabies virus prophylaxis if there is indication for it. Now we'll discuss it in which patients do you go for rabies prophylaxis and which patients you do not go for rabies prophylaxis. When you are about to decide that whether you have to give rabies exposed exposure prophylaxis or not, you have to see that whether the patient got a bite from a wild animal or a domestic animal. Usually domestic animals are the ones that are already vaccinated and they do not contain rabies virus. Wild animals are very prone to have rabies virus in them, including bats, foxes, skunk bites. And in developing countries, the dogs are also not vaccinated and they are very prone to have rabies virus in them. So if there is wild animal bite, you need to see that whether the animal is available for testing or not. If the animal is available for testing, usually that animal is killed and the brain is taken for detection of rabies virus. If the test comes out to be positive, you must go for rabies post-exposure prophylaxis. And according to the guidelines, if the animal is not available for testing, that is also an indication that you have to go for post-exposure prophylaxis since you cannot test the animal. So you will take it as an indication for post-exposure prophylaxis. But if the animal is available, you test the animal. And if the test comes out to be positive, then you give the prophylaxis. If the patient has been bit by a domestic animal, then you have to see that whether that animal has the symptoms of rabies or not. Usually domestic animals are already vaccinated for rabies and they do not have any symptoms of rabies. But if the animal is showing any symptoms of rabies, symptoms of rabies in animals are the same as in humans. 
they might be hyper salivating they might be having seizures they might be having paralysis they might be confused and agitated so these are the symptoms of rabies in animals as well if the domestic animal is showing the symptoms you have to straight away give post exposure prophylaxis and keep the family away from that animal and get rid of that animal so you give post exposure prophylaxis if the domestic animal shows symptoms and if the patient got bit by a domestic animal and that animal is not showing any symptoms then you have to observe that animal for the next 10 days that whether that animal gets any symptoms of rabies or not if the animal does not get any symptoms in the next 10 days then the chances are that there was no uh, rabies in that animal and post exposure prophylaxis is not needed if the animal develops the symptoms of rabies in the next 10 days you have to give post exposure prophylaxis in that case so if the patient has been bit by animal bite see whether it is wild or it is a domestic animal if it is wild if it is it is available for testing kill the animal get the sample and give post exposure prophylaxis if the test comes out to be positive if the animal is not available straight away give post exposure prophylaxis if domestic animal is there observe it for the next 10 days and if uh, the animal develops symptoms give post exposure prophylaxis if animal does not develop any symptoms post exposure prophylaxis is not needed important thing to remember is that even the suspicion slightest suspicion of rabies is an indication of post exposure prophylaxis because if patient develops symptomatic rabies then it is a fatal disease then you cannot protect him so even suspicion of rabies is sufficient indication for post exposure prophylaxis now when you have decided that you are going to give the post exposure prophylaxis then you have to see that whether the patient has been immunized for rabies or not if the patient has been immunized for rabies before then the, there is different prophylaxis and if the patient has not been immunized before for rabies then there is a different prophylaxis if the patient was not immunized for rabies before then you have to give two things you have to give rabies immunoglobulin rabies immunoglobulins are basically the antibodies that that catch the virus that kill the virus so you give prepared passive immunization passive rabies immunoglobulin and you give it at the site of the bite this is a picture showing anti rabies serum antibodies prepared antibodies these are usually given after a test dose so that the patient does not develop any allergic reaction because these are usually prepared in the animals so these antibodies can have an allergic reaction so you give it after the test dose and if the patient develops any anaphylactic reaction you manage that if you want to learn about the management of anaphylactic shock i have talked about it in detail in my video on treatment and management of anaphylactic shock you can check out it the link in the description below then the dose is 40 international unit per kg you give it around the wound the site of the bite and you the rest is given in the anterior thigh and remember you give it within 24 hours so that there is more effective response so that the antibodies neutralize the virus but if there is any delay you can delay it up to 7 days but after 7 days there is no use of giving immunoglobulin to the patient because after 7 days the body itself will develop antibodies against the rabies virus and if you give immunoglobulin at that point this ex exogenous immunoglobulin will suppress the immune response so after 7 days immunoglobulins are not preferred if within 7 days you can give it so you should give rabies immunoglobulin in case of any reaction give evel diphenhydramine with dexamethasone now when you are giving a prophylaxis to a non immunized patient you have given the rabies immunoglobulin at the site of bite and rest in anterior thigh with that you also have to give inactivated killed rabies vaccine because prophylaxis is incomplete without the rabies vaccine you rabies vaccine is a killed vaccine and it is given im intramuscularly at the time of presentation at zero at third day at seventh day and at the 14th day so there are four doses of rabies vaccine given at certain duration rabies vaccine is a killed vaccine this is a picture showing rabies vaccine and it is given in the deltoid region or in the outer aspect of thigh in children remember it must never be given in the gluteal region 
because if it is given in the gluteal region the response the immune response generated by the vaccine is weak if you give the vaccine in gluteal region the immune response generated by the body against this vaccine will be weak so it is never given in the gluteal region it is given in the deltoid region and in the outer aspect of thigh in children pregnancy is not a contraindication for rabies vaccine so this was the post exposure prophylaxis in a person who was not immunized with rabies vaccine before if a person is already immunized patient if the patient was already immunized with rabies and now he got bite and you can you are considering giving post exposure prophylaxis in that patient rabies immunoglobulins rabies antibodies are not needed because that patient was already immunized and that patient already has antibodies against the uh, rabies virus in his body they do not need rabies immunoglobulin they just need a booster dose of rabies vaccine you give them rabies vaccine i am two doses only at the time of presentation at zero and at the third day and then you check the antibody titers at the day 14 that whether they have developed good immune response good antibody response against the virus or not so if the person is immunized they do not need immunoglobulins they do not need antibodies they just need the rabies vaccine at two doses of rabies vaccine if the patient is not immunized you give them rabies immunoglobulin as well as rabies vaccine in summary we talked about the management of dog bite you clean the wound you leave the wound site open you give the antibiotic prophylaxis you give the tetanus shock and you decide that whether you have to give post exposure prophylaxis or not then the symptoms of rabies rabies is almost fatal if symptomatic then you decide that in which patient you go for rabies prophylaxis and which patient you do not go for it and if you have decided that you are going to give the rabies prophylaxis then non immunized patient is given immunoglobulins with vaccine in immunized patient is given only the vaccine dose how to give rabies immunoglobulin and rabies vaccine never given in the gluteal region so this was all about dog bite and rabies prophylaxis if you liked my video please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on emergency medicine and infectious medicine the link of those videos is given in the description below thank you very much